بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان اکرمکم عند اللہ اتقاکم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل العقدتم من لسانی یخبہو قولی My respected brothers and my sisters Today I have a very unique topic inshallah to talk about and that is human rights in Islam and as I will go inshallah I will give you the comparison as well after Magna Carta which happened 600 years after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam West thinks that they are the pioneer of human rights. So inshallah in today's khutbah, many of us, wallahi many of us we don't know about human rights, what Islam upholds, what Islam stands for. So that we can really feel proud of our religion, that what teachings Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has given us, there are few things which you have to remember. These rights are given by no king, no human being. Rather, these rights are given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So nobody can take these rights away. Nobody has that power. And Quran says, if somebody takes away these rights given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah calls them kafir or zalim or munafiq the second thing which I want to highlight here these rights Islam's gifts is for all human being regardless of their faith regardless of their ethnicity regardless their social status and number three, which is the most important point, there is no admission, entry of human emotions in these rights. As inshallah you will listen to my khutbah, you will realize that no human being can give these rights without being biased. The only one who is unbiased, for whom everybody is equal and same, is nobody but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I will remind you of the famous saying of Hazrat Abu Bakr razi Allah ta'ala anhu when he gave his very first sermon after he became the Khalifa he says that weakest among you weakest among you is the strongest in my eyes and strongest among you is the weakest in my eyes because there is a saying of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if there is no guardian there is nobody to take care of anybody in Islamic state Islamic society then I will be his guardian I will be his wali I will be his surprise when Prophet is mentioning I means head of the state Whoever will be the in charge of the affairs of the Muslims will be the sarparast, will be the guardian, will be the wali of the one who has no support in the community and society. Look at how Islam uplifts the weakest of the society. When I will highlight few of the points of the human rights in Islam, we all have to first understand that Islam respects life of every fellow human being when Quran says that if you kill any human being unjustly it is like you have killed the whole humanity and same way Quran says that if you save the life of any human being that means that you have saved the life of all human beings around the world Talmud the book you follow today in Talmud it is written saving life of a Jew is like saving life of whole humanity and hurting any Israelite 
is like hurting the whole humanity on the contrast quran says the totally different thing and when islam talks about justice islam talks about justice for every fellow human being in quran surah maida ayah number 8 allah subhanahu wa taala says that be careful be watchful animosity of somebody should not let you transgress the right of other person even for enemies you have to respect the right of that fellow human being my brothers and my sisters islam gives respect to the chastity of women even at the war time nobody ever can prove that is if muslims have conquered any place on this planet and have and they have gone in that community they have ever disrespected women of that community and we know how the west works they provide their own daughters and sisters to the army to serve them to fulfill their needs on the contrary islam protects even the women of enemies that you have conquered the area because the chastity of women is has a prime place in islamic society individual right of freedom i want to talk a little bit about slavery because there is a lot of negative talk about islam and slavery and look what i'm about to share with you the real picture of the world and what islam has done and only allah subhanahu wa taala only allah subhanahu wa taala can guide us to make such rules that you can you can see the fruits of those rules in no time when prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came we know the slavery was going on around the world for thousands of years within 30 to 40 years slavery was gone from arab peninsula the reason was that prophet encouraged people that if you free any slave so every uz every body part of this that slave that you have freed will save you from the fire of hell fire only hazrat abdur rahman bin auf رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ پرچیز 3000 سلیوز اور فریڈ دیم سو وی کین سی دیٹ اسلام ہاؤ اسلام ہیز ٹاٹ دیم ٹو ٹریٹ یور سلیوز جینٹلی نائسلی فیڈ دیم وٹ یو ایٹ بٹ سلولی اینڈ گریجولی دس چیپٹر آف سلیوری واز فیزڈ آؤٹ واز گان فرام دا ہسٹری of humanity in the areas where muslims were ruling within 30 to 40 years see how islam took care of slavery and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that if you slave any free man then i will be his advocate his wakil on the day of judgment so my brothers and my sisters on the contrary let's see america has abused slaves for 350 years this is history starts from 1600 350 years we used slaves here in this country to serve us all around the world west has taken more than 100 million slaves from africa and other parts of the world to serve the west and as a matter, as a matter of fact that coast in africa from where all these slaves were getting bored on ships the name of that coast was slavery coast only in britain uk has abused 20 million slaves between 1686 and 1780 in 100 years 20 million slaves served just british just in one year 1799 british has captured 
and brought slaves from Africa 75,000. And historians have written the ships they were using to transport these slaves, the condition of those slaves and just ships were, they were all tied, chained, like animals. When they were getting shipped from Africa to different parts of the world, 20% of those slaves will lose their life during this journey in ships. So my brothers and my sisters, Wallahi, you are seeing these days how truth can get shadowed by the lies through the propaganda. And whoever talks about Islam, that Islam has done this and Islam has done that, we know the real picture of the world. Only thing we as a Muslim, we don't know our history, that's why we act weak, my brothers and my sisters. You know, in Islam, the, the right of the sanctity and security of personal life. In Islamic law, nobody can do eavesdrop. Nobody can do peering in your house. Peering has a bigger meaning. Eavesdrop now has bigger meaning. It's not that somebody is coming at your doorstep and trying to see inside. No. In Islamic law, somebody who is in, pers in his personal domain, nobody can invade the sanctity of the privacy of anybody. There is a hadith in which Hazrat Amir Muawiyah says, Prophet Muhammad says to me that if you will go after finding secrets of the people, you are going to ruin them. You are going to destroy them. So if you are inside your home, in your private life, then Islamic government has no right to invade your privacy. My brothers and my sisters, this is one of the most important right that Islam gives. Protection from arbitrary imprisonment. You cannot arrest anybody without proving his fault. You cannot arrest somebody on behalf of other. Father has done something, then you are arresting the son. No, you cannot do because there is a rule set by Quran. No soul will bear the burden of other. This is the ruling of Quran. So somebody who has done the crime, he will be the one should be arrested. There is a famous story. One time Prophet Muhammad Wasallam was giving khutbah in Masjid Nabi. And one man, he stood up and he says to Prophet ﷺ, In what fault, jurm, my neighbors were arrested? Why my neighbor was arrested, Ya Rasulullah? Prophet ﷺ did not answer. He kept giving his khutbah. The man stood up again and asked, Ya Rasulullah, why my neighbor was arrested? Prophet ﷺ did not answer. The neighbor stood the third time. And the Prophet ﷺ instructed the policeman sitting in Masjid Nabi who has the custody of that prison, prisoner. Prophet told, tells him right away, free that man. Sahaba said the reason was Prophet ﷺ gave that policeman who was the guard of that prison to give you a reason why you have arrested the neighbor of this man. If this man stood twice and you had no answer, then that means you have to release that person. You cannot keep anybody until and unless you have proved his fault. Then I will come to you right to protest against tyranny. There is an ayah of Quran in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like anybody speaking bad in public except the one who was oppressed. The oppressed person has right in Islamic society that he can speak publicly about what has happened to him and this is the permission given by Quran and our deen, my, my brothers 
and my sisters, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us tawfiq that we truly really can go through what Islam stands for. Such a beautiful religion. And it's not that these things are just written in books. These are the things that we have practiced for 1300 years. And in my last part of khutbah, what I'm about to share with you, this is, that is the eye-opener. That what Islam, because if you want to know what kind of person I am, then see me when I am angry, when I am in war, when I am in fight with somebody. And the picture of Islam that I will share, inshallah, second part of my khutbah, will give you the true beauty of Islam, that Islam is the religion given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fulfillment of covenants. Islam wants every Muslim to be symbol of justice. Symbol of justice. Does not matter if it hurts you, if it hurts your family, if it hurts, you know, anybody that you love the most. Sulay Hudaybiya. Contract is already written. Suhail bin Amr who was from the Mushrikeen has signed, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has signed that if any Muslim will run away from Makkah and he reaches Medina, Muslims are bound to return that Muslim back to Makkah. Strange rule, strange rule. Here comes Hazrat Abu Jundal, Razi Allah Ta'ala Anho, son of Suhail bin Amr, who is representing Mushrikeen is chained and he is in a very bad condition and Abu Jundal requesting Muslims that I am in a very bad condition take me to Medina please rescue me and Prophet says no Abu Jundal we have already signed a treaty agreement that if any Muslim will run away from Makkah to Medina, we will give him back to Makkans. And as a Muslim, we will follow that treaty. See here, every Sahabi at that time was crying, has tears in his eyes. Hazrat Umar was holding himself back that how he can let this Muslim suffering and going back in the hands of Makkans in such a bad condition. But Prophet stood up and he says, nobody will defend him. This is the contract. This is the covenant that we have signed and we will abide by that contract. Now let me share with you a few things about when Muslims are in fight with somebody. No Muslim can hurt anybody who is non-competent, who is not in fight with you who is not engaged in war with you. Torture with fire. Muslims are not allowed to hurt anybody with fire. Saying of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu the only authority can punish somebody with fire is Rabbun Nar. Rabbun Nar. Rabb of the fire is the only one who can punish human being with the fire. Look at the Muslim country like Pakistan. What happens there? On the name of the respect of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu They are disrespecting the, their own Prophet. If they burn the body and they humiliate the body of a person after he is dead. Respect of the dead body. And this is the key that you can understand. There is no human emotions working here. Battle of Ahad. And Mushrikeen, they have cut the nose and ears of Muslims. And they, have, they, are, threading, they are putting thread to make a necklace. So they can put in their neck as a trophy of the war. Ne nose and ears of the Muslims. And Prophet ﷺ comes and he says that Muslims are not allowed to mutilate the dead body of enemy. Enemies are doing in front of their eyes 
they are cutting the nose and ears of Muslims. Hazrat Hamza, uncle of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu the slave of Hind who was wife of Abu Sufyan. And they opened the abdomen of Hazrat Hamza and she is biting on the liver of Hamza. Allah, uncle of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Look at the emotions. How high were the emotions of Muslims? But still Prophet is saying no. This is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muslims cannot mutilate the body of the enemy. If in the war time anybody is injured, you cannot kill that person who was a minute ago, he was fighting with you, but he is injured, he is not in fight with you anymore. So you cannot hurt him. If you have prisoners of war, you cannot slain. You cannot kill prisoners of war. Look at the beauty of, of the Islam. If somebody has died and he is in your custody in the battleground, then you are supposed to return his body to the enemy. Famous story. At the time of battle of Khandak, one of the mushrikeen, very famous mushrikeen, among the famous mushrikeen, he died and he fall in a ditch. They came to Prophet Muhammad and offered him that we want to pay you 10,000 dinar and give us the body of this person. And Prophet says that I am not here to sell the dead bodies. And Prophet handed over the dead body of that mushrik with full respect. This is another teaching that taught to Muslims that you know how low will be that person. How low will be the dead person that somebody is dead in front of him or her and they mutilate or they insult or they hurt the dead body of that person. How low? But unfortunately, we see that even in our own country, we see that, especially I'll say in Pakistan, India and Bangladesh, those countries, we do see those pictures as well. So this is not the Islamic way, my brothers and my sister, that's what I want. And Muslims are not allowed to do any kind of looting and destruction after they conquer any place. Of, they cannot occupy anybody's land. Famous story of Abu Ubaida bin Jarrah and Khalid bin Walid when they captured the part of Syria. That part of the Syria was not captured because of the war was captured because of the agreement. There was a piece of land they wanted to have for masjid. They had to negotiate with the owner. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu says that if you use the property of anybody from the conquered land without the permission, without paying for it, it is as haram as the debt, as murdar as a dead animal, like dead animal is haram, same way this is haram for any Muslim, unpermissible to use anybody's property, anybody's anything after you conquered that place. There is a saying of Hazrat Umar you cannot even use the milk of animals of the land that you have conquered without the permission of the owner. My respected Brothers and my sisters, and it is the command of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi if you conquer any place, you cannot hurt children, you cannot hurt women, you cannot hurt ill, sick people, you cannot hurt anybody who is in the worship place, you cannot hurt any elderly person, you cannot hurt anybody who is not engaged with you in war.